Hi, 7th grade. Welcome back. Today is Thursday, and it's the beginning of our new unit. Our new unit is called the Protestant Reformation, and it has to do with the religion and the power of the Catholic Church in Europe. If you remember, after the fall of the Roman Empire, Europe was divided into many different kingdoms. But there was one thing that kind of unified Europe at this time, and that is Christianity. Now, I'm going to be saying Christianity a lot and also Catholicism. In this case, Catholicism and Christianity mean the same thing, okay? Um, and I will clarify how that changes over time. Before we start, this video will be substantially long because today is the first day of the unit. So there's a lot that we need to cover. If there's something you don't understand, please email me and I will clarify it for you. So let's start with Jesus, right? If you remember, in Christianity, Jesus is considered the Son of God. He is the Messiah, the one that is born from the Virgin Mary. People that accept him, people that accept his teachings become Christian. And people that don't are not Christian, right? His life and teachings and ideas are in the New Testaments and connected to the Old Testament that makes the Bible. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Jesus. So Jesus was born in 4 BCE in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And Bethlehem is will be located in this area here. Okay? That's where Jesus was born. So I, you don't need to know exactly where he was born, but, you know, for reference. Uh, worship uh, God and follow Jewish law. Uh, Jesus was Jewish, right? Um at age 30, he began preaching to villagers, used parables or short stories with simple moral lessons to communicate his ideas. He recruited 12 disciples or followers to help him spread his ideas, right? Uh, these are called the apostles. One uh, that you need to know for sure is going to be uh, Peter. Also known as St. Peter. You might remember it from St. Peter's Basilica from the Renaissance. Some Jews in Jerusalem welcomed Jesus. Many of the priests felt he threatened their leadership. Roman authorities felt Jesus would lead the, uh, the Jews in a revolt against their rule. Uh, Jesus was, become a, was an issue for Romans, for the Roman people, because Jesus was teaching in the idea of one God, uh, while Romans had multiple gods. Okay, So Christianity is, uh, comes out of the teachings of Jesus. According to the Gospels, and the Gospels have, and the Gospels are just, um, it's the Bible. Okay. According to the Gospels, Jesus was betrayed by one of his disciples, arrested by the Romans, and killed by crucifixion. So he was crucified. A person was bound to a cross and left to die. Rumors then spread that Jesus had not died, but risen from the death and commanded his disciples to spread his teachings. So in Christianity, Jesus was crucified. He died on the cross. Three days later, he came back. Uh, he preached for 40 days, and then he uh, rose to heaven. Right? After, the disciple, after the disciples reported, he ascended into heaven. So uh, in Christianity, Jesus uh, um, came back to life and ascended to heaven. So, so at first, Christianity was really uh, a troubled religion, right? Um, they were persecuted. They were killed. Eventually, it became, and I'm not going to go into how it became the religion of Rome, but it became accepted as the religion of Rome. Okay? Uh, the followers of Christianity are called Christian. Christians. Disciples uh, preached the message of Christianity through the Roman world, so they were began to, to preach or to spread uh, Christianity. Peter, I don't know why this is um, um, this color, but Peter established Christianity in Rome itself. So Peter, remember Peter was one of his followers, established Christianity here in Rome. Okay. Uh, played the most, influ and he became one of the most influential people in spreading Christianity. He was eventually killed. Uh, he spread Christianity throughout the Mediterranean. This is St. Paul. He was a Roman, um, a Roman person that persecuted um, Christians, and eventually he converted to Christianity. His letter, his le his letters became part of the New Testament. So the letters of this guy can be found in the New Testament. So that's a little preview of what Christianity is, right? Um, today we're focusing primarily on the power 
of this religion during the Middle Ages because people eventually begin to resent this power. So the Middle Ages have also been known as or been called the Age of Faith because, uh, because religion was such a large part of medieval Europe. When I, when I say religion, I mean Christianity and in this case, Catholicism. The Catholic religion is the dominant Christian religion in Western Europe. In this lesson, you will learn how to define Roman Catholic Church and tithes. I don't even know how to say this word. I struggle with this word all the time. These are taxes, by the way. Taxes people, oh, wow. Taxes that people pay the church. Um, what? With the fall of Roman, of Rome, sorry, the central government collapsed in Western Europe. So in Europe, if you remember the Roman Empire dominated pretty much, I'm going to make a, I'm going to just pick a different color here. Uh, the Roman Empire controlled all of this, including that. But with the fall of Rome, now you have independent kingdoms, right? They are, Europe is all split up into different little kingdoms. Each kingdom is ruled by a different king. But there is one thing that unifies, this is actually not Europe, this is Africa. This is actually one thing that unifies Europe at this time, and that is the religion of Christianity, Catholicism in this time. Okay, there's one thing that unifies Europe. It's not language, it's not politics, it's not governments, it is religion. Religion is what most Europeans have in common. Yes, there are some Muslims and there are some Jews, but for the most part, most Europeans are, um, are Christian at this time. Hundreds of little governments replaced the Roman Empire. Right? They're not little, but they're smaller than the Roman Empire. No longer is there just one king for the whole empire. Western Europe was not adhering to one set of laws, so every kingdom had a different set of laws. However, this is really important. Most medieval Europeans, it's a bit bigger. Most medieval Europeans were Roman Catholics. The Roman Catholic Church united most people in Western Europe. When we say Western Europe, we mean When I say Western Europe, I mean this part. This is Western Europe. Okay? So, again, when I say Christian, that is uh, the belief in Jesus as the Son of God. And when I say Catholic, that is a branch of Christianity. But you need to understand that in the Middle Ages, there was really one, only one branch of Christianity um, in Western Europe. And that is the Catholic. Catholic actually means universal. And you might, you might ask, who's at the very top of the Catholic religion? At the very top of the Catholic religion is the Pope. The Pope is considered um, the, the God's representative here on earth. The first Pope was Peter. Remember him? Uh, St. Peter. He was the first Pope. And after the Pope dies, a new Pope is elected. You might wonder how a new Pope is elected. Uh, the Cardinals, there's 100, about 193 around the world. They get together. They go into the uh, the, the, the Sistine Chapel. Remember the, remember the one with the nice ceiling? Michelangelo. And they, amongst themselves, they pick a new Pope. Right? And that will become the new Pope. Okay? Below the... And, you, and this is... As long as you understand that the Pope is at the very top. That's all I need you to know. Okay, the Pope is the leader of the Catholic Church. And during the Middle Ages, the Pope had probably more power and probably more money than a lot of the kings in Europe. right? Because the Pope is able to, according to Christians and Catholics, is able to control who enters heaven and who doesn't. And remember, people at this time were highly religious. Uh, the last thing they wanted was to be excommunicated or kicked out of the church. And when they die, they would, according to their teachings, they would, and, uh, they would go to hell. Okay, so hell lasts a long time. Hell is eternal in Christianity. The role of the medieval church. The Roman Catholic Church was a dominant religion in Western Europe. Again, when I, I don't want you to get confused with this word. Catholicism is a branch of Christianity led by the, 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 the Pope. Roman Catholicism was a dominant religion in Western Europe during the Middle Ages. Without a common government to hold everyone together, the Catholic Church filled an important role in people's lives. So there was no one king that dominated all of Europe, but there was one pope that dominated all of Europe. The Catholic pope became the strongest 
political leader in Western Europe. So he has a lot of uh, economic, social, religious, uh, political power. The Roman Catholic Church was very powerful in medieval, in medieval times. The power of heaven and hell. Think about how important or how powerful someone might be if they are seen as being able to control your destiny in the afterlife. Medieval people were very religious. Now, does that mean that every single person was religious? No, but most of them were. They believed that the Roman Catholic Church had the power to send people to heaven or hell. They believed that you needed the, the, the church to enter heaven. The, 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 the church had the tools to uh, help you enter heaven. And we'll talk about this in a second. Their intense religious conviction led to many of them to accept religious uh, church teachings. The Catholic Church conducted spiritual uh, uh, spiritual rituals. You will need to know this word. The word is sacrament. These are rituals that Catholics practice. There are seven of them. Um, they don't have to practice every single one of them because they're, you'll see why that, that, that wouldn't work. It and created a system of rules called canon law that all Christians had to follow. Christians who violated or Christians who did not follow the laws of the, of the church were excommunicated. That means that they are no longer able to take parts in these sacraments. If you are excommunicated, you cannot do these. And if you cannot do those, you go to hell. Because you need these sacraments to be able to enter heaven. Okay. So again, you if you are excommunicated according to the church and you die, you are not you don't have the tools to enter heaven. So kings or lords who violated canon law could face, I don't even know what that word is. It means ban on religious services in a, uh, in a king's lands. The Roman Catholic Church was very wealthy at this time. Think about the power that they have and uh, they begin to amass large amounts of money because people want to be able to please the church. Uh, and this is an issue that comes up later. Okay. Uh, each territory, so remember the, the, the manners? from the first unit we did, each manor had a church for the most part. Each territory in medieval Europe had a church with it, which provided order on the manor. Priests controlled the people's access to heaven by delivering the sacraments. Remember the sacraments again? This one's gonna make a, an appearance a lot. And uh, absolving in this case means getting rid of sins. Peasants, lived hard, were, peasants lives were hard, but the hope of entering heaven kept them loyal and obedient to the Christian, to the church. Christians paid a tax call, uh, called a tithe. Tithe. Uh, so a, a tax that people pay uh, at this time is called this a tithe. Okay. And they were required to pay for it. They were required to pay. And if you didn't pay, you can go to jail for it. Priests were the main contact most people have with the Catholic church. So I, I, what I want you to understand is that the church is very powerful. It is in the lives of most Europeans from birth to death, right? And you're pretty much required to become part of this religion in this case, right? Um, otherwise, you are an outsider. So the church was the largest landowner. The Roman Catholic Church was the largest landowner in Western Europe during the Middle Ages. So the church of the Middle Ages was very different than today. Today, the church still has a lot of land. The Catholic church still has a lot of land, has a lot of churches. But it is very different than what it was back then. Back then, the church was a political, economic, social, religious superpower. The Roman Catholic church was the largest landowner in Western Europe during the Middle Ages. Nobles frequently left land to the church because they believed that this was a good deed. This bought you kind of like brownie points to get into heaven. Nobles hoped to gain entry to heaven through such good works. So this is one of the reasons they did it. They left land because they believed that this was a, a good thing to do because God would be happy with them. The Roman Catholic Church was the main center of learning in medieval times. One thing that I want you to remember is during the Middle Ages, most people could not read. Most All books were written by hand. And most books were written in Latin. So most people did not have access to the Bible. That doesn't come until the 1400s when people begin to use the printing press and people begin to translate the Bible. So at this time, people need the church to be able to get into heaven. They can't just go and read the Bible on their own. One, Bibles are not easily accessible. 
Two, if they find a Bible, it's most likely not written in a language that they can understand. The church did not allow the Bibles to be translated. You could be killed for that or even copied. They had to be copied by someone from the church. The center of learning. The Roman church was the main center of learning in medieval times. Usually the only people who could read or write were church officials like the priest, the bishops. It is important to remember that with the fall of Rome, much secular education ended. So a lot of, uh, uh, with the fall of Rome, a lot of things like science, um, math, a lot of it ended. Not, not, not completely, but for the most part, it's very religious based. The Roman Catholic Church was the wealthy institution in medieval Europe. The wealth of the church. The Roman Catholic Church was a wealthy institution. People pay taxes and you were required to pay a tax. It was a percentage of a person's total income. Usually, it, I think it was about 20%. The church was a lot. Again, I, I want to keep going back to this. Oh, it's 10% here. Um, the church was very, very, very interesting and very powerful. Even today, even today, Christians still do that, right? People still pay a tax. It's, and for the most part, it's optional. It's not something that they force you to do. All right, questions. How did the Roman Empire affect the people of Western Europe? What institution united people during the Middle Ages? Why did this institution, why did this institution unite people during the Middle Ages? How did it become so wealthy? Um, the church had the power to excommunicate. This is a really, really important word. When you are excommunicated, you are removed from the religion. That means that you can no longer practice the sacraments. And in order to enter heaven, you need to practice the sacraments. And I'll go over what the sacraments are in a second. The church was a center, uh, a center to your spiritual and social life. It was a harsh punishment, likely removing someone from society. Here are the sacraments. So in the Catholic Church, there are seven sacraments. And you will need to know all of them um, because they are really, really important. And you're going to see later that this becomes an issue for some people. So the first one is baptism. That is, you probably seen it. It's when you uh, have a baby. And you can be baptized as an adult later. Uh, and you wash away the original sin. Okay? I'm not going to go into what original sin is. But it is uh, when the priest does a ceremony. When you wash the, when you cleanse the soul. When you clean the soul. Okay? The Eucharist is when you, uh, when I say you, I mean when a Catholic person uh, goes to church and there's a piece of bread that represents the body of Christ and the wine that represents the, um, the blood of Christ. That's another one. Confirmation is when you confirm your faith. This is done when you're a little older. Uh, this one is when you're a kid. Uh, this one you can do throughout your life. Confirmation is, I did it, I, I was raised a Catholic. I did it, I think, when I was like eight, nine, something like that. It's when you confirm your belief in Jesus and God. Penance in Catholicism is when you confess your sins to a priest and he gives you a, um, um, like a task to do, like pray this many times. Okay, so that's penance. Uh, anointing of the sick is when someone is about to die, uh, you bring, the, the, the family brings in a priest and they, um, they, they, you know, they, they anoint them, they, you know, ho hopefully they, they absolve them of, of, of sin, okay? Uh, when the person can confess one more time, uh, this is before you, um, because before you die, Okay? in preparation for the soul to the journey after death. Holy orders. This is the one that uh, most people, most Catholics won't do because this is only for priests. Men ordain on levels of the church. So be, to become a, bi a bishop, a priest. Okay. So um, if you do all the other ones, you pro you wouldn't do this one. And then the last one is matrimony. This is when um, a priest brings uh, two people together in marriage. So again, th so these, according to the church, these are the requirements that you that 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 you practice to enter heaven. These are the sacraments, and if you are excommunicated from the church, you can't practice these. You can't do these. Therefore, you are eliminated from entering heaven. Okay. 
Uh, today I don't have a video, but I do have a short reading. Uh, these will probably appear in your exit ticket. So the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages was the Middle Ages had kings, lords, knights, and serfs. At the at the same time, the Catholic Church. Remember this fancy word, the Catholic Church, a Christian Church. The only Christian Church in the Middle Ages had a similar hierarchy or similar structure. The Pope. He makes an appearance again. The Pope was the leader of the church. The archbishops and bishops ruled large areas under the direction of the Pope. The priests were each in charge of their local parish under the direction of the bishop. Local parish means the local church. The priests and the other church leaders together were known as the clergy. So people that work for the church, like the Pope, bishop, priest, they're known as the clergy. The parish was made up of all the church members in the area. And in the middle ages this was nearly everyone so most people at this time were catholic this is going to change eventually though and this is where this unit is going the church was very important to the people of the middle ages it was definitely not just for sunday medieval people believed in heaven and hell and they believed that they must do whatever the clergy told them to do in order to get into heaven and to avoid the fires of hell when I was growing up, I was raised a Catholic, and I was petrified of hell. I still kind of am, because, you know, when you're a kid, you you know, I'm, like, hell sounds really, really awful. Like, the church is really, really good at, at, at making this very vivid. Uh, another reason why they had gargoyles was to show people that this is what you're going to face when you enter hell, if you don't follow the church. One thing they were told was to pay taxes, so they did. It's called a tithe the church to the church. A tithe was one-tenth of a person's income. So if you made $100 a month, you had to pay $10. It will be paid in cash or in goods such as crops or cattle. So if you don't have the money, you can find something that was worth that 10%. People in the Middle Ages also paid for certain church services such as marriages. So if you got married, you pay the church. Baptism, you pay the church. And burial, you pay the church. They were willing to pay because they believed that the church would only allow them to enter heaven if they had been baptized, married to the ch by the church, and buried on holy ground. And so, if someone opposed a teaching of the church, the clergy would excommunicate them. Okay, when you are excommunicated, you are removed from that religion. And according to the church, if you are removed from that religion, when you die, you will enter hell. And hell is a very unpleasant place. It has devils, and it has fire, and it's bad. That meant that the person was no longer a member of the church. Excommunication was the worst punishment that a person could get from the church here on earth. Excommunication was worse than death. Because if you die, like your life is over. But excommunication means that your soul is over. Your soul enters a, a state that you are there forever. The, P, the Pope had the final decision about all church matters. He was the leader in charge of all the bishops, archbishops, priests, and people. In the Middle Ages, the Pope was a powerful leader, almost like a king. The bishops and our bishops each ruled over their own area called a diocese. They supervised the priests and also the monks and nuns in their area. They also conducted the church businesses. Bishops were often from rich, so bishops were often from rich noble families. They were not only leaders of the church, they also played a large role in the government. Bishops sometimes advised kings and often participated in politics. A priest was in charge of each parish or church. He will say mass, conduct other religious services, minister, minister to the sick, and give out alms or charity to the poor. Sometimes if a priest could read and write, they, they kept written records of important information in their town. This may have been only, the only records kept at the time. Priests also collected tithes, again, from the uh, parishioners. Priests in the Middle Ages were not usually from noble families, and they often had little education themselves. Even so, they often conducted classes to teach Latin, and the Bible lessons as the young people of the parish. Priests also taught that their priests also taught their par uh, parishioners the belief of of the Catholic Church. They taught that the Pope was infallible. Remember this word? Infallible means cannot cannot do anything wrong. That whatever he says is true, which means that anything he says about religious matters could be not not be wrong. They taught that the way to heaven was through the Catholic Church. They taught that the clergy were more holy than ordinary people. They taught people that they must do what they must they must do to be saved. The clergy were important leaders of the Middle Ages. They were respected and sometimes feared. Medieval people looked at their clergy as a bridge between God and them. So I'm gonna make a, a a thing here. So 
So here's heaven, right? Here's heaven. And here are uh, the people. Here are the people. In order, people can't just go to heaven on their own. Right? That's not a lot in the medieval period. Uh, and instead, people needed, um, here's, here's, here's the people. You can't just go to heaven, right? Here's the church. In order to enter heaven, you must go through the church. Catholic church. Okay? And then you enter heaven. So people have to use, people, the only way to enter heaven is through the church. Because the church controls the Bible, sacraments, pretty much the key to heaven. The church controls the key to heaven. Um, and people are, are willing to go with that. And you will see that this unit is about some people saying, wait, this, this doesn't make any sense. Why, why, why do we need the church? Why can't we just go around the church? And those people get into a lot of trouble with the church, right? Because the church has, has had so much power, so much wealth, so much religious, political, economic power. And it's not willing to give this power up because entering heaven is the ultimate goal for all Europeans that are Catholic or Christian at this time, right? And the church knows that. And 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 and, and if and if and if you challenge that, there's going to be serious consequences from the church. Okay? Um I didn't provide a video today. I usually do, but you're more than welcome to Google um Catholic Church Middle Ages. Okay? When I say Catholic, I mean the Christian church. There's only one Christian church at this time. When I say one Christian church, I mean like one Christian religion. And the, the big one, and in, I'm talking about Western Europe, like, you know, Spain, Italy, England, France. There's only one major Christian religion, and there's a Catholic church. And that Catholic, Catholic church is ruled by um, or led by the Pope. Okay. Um, you have this video to watch. I will leave the document uh, in classroom as well, and then you also have an exit ticket. Um, I am beginning to put in your grades for um, your listening activity. Please check your grades. If you don't see one there, I put it on in for all for you CSC. Uh, but if you don't see it there yet, it's, it's coming. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye.